Good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. And today I'm going to be talking about my journey for, the t for two and a half years. The journey of how I got my heart out of a box. So who am I? I'm just simply a girl that just wants to make a difference and empower others to make a difference in their communities and in, in their lives. At a very young age, I was leading groups of young people, speaking at rallies or on television, advocating on behalf of youth, and working with senior leaders in various sectors. The dedicated young people that I worked with and I surrounded myself with believed that leadership was ageless and that anything was possible if you had the passion and the drive. We were lucky in that we had mentors and advisors who created environments in which we got to be ourselves, to dream big, to create, to make mistakes, and to always question the status quo and to innovate. It was in these environments that my friends and myself flourished in. We got to live from our hearts. We got to be our authentic selves. It was due to these beliefs and the support that we received we were able to make a difference in our communities. So when I wanted to go to grad school, I wanted an environment that allowed me to be myself, to dream big, to create, to make mistakes, to always question the status quo and to innovate. I chose the Masters of Business, Entrepreneurship and Technology at the University of Waterloo. It was in that program that I fostered a deeper sense of self, and I was able to learn how to make a living while pursuing my passion. But in life, things don't always go as planned. I expected when I graduated that I would be working at an entrepreneurial firm or having my own startup. Instead, I got sick and I had to move back home. So while my counterparts were getting into top firms and starting up their own companies, I had to be home healing. An interesting thing is my father is a serial entrepreneur, while my mother worked in telecom for 30 years. My mother, like many others, are of the thought that an ideal life is one where you get into a top company, you move up, you get health insurance, and a legitimate pension plan. While that is life for some, and I respect that, I knew that that was not the life for me. I wanted more. I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to be in environments that allowed me to create to innovate, to be myself, question the status quo, push boundaries, and innovate. However, what happened to me next was something that I would not necessarily have thought would happen. I went to New Zealand to film a documentary using all my savings. When I came back, the documentary fell apart. I was broke and TELUS was threatening to cut off my lifeline, my cell phone. <laughs> so I knew that I had to get a job. I was stuck. Luckily, when I came back, I had an interview for an executive assistant position at a foundation. I got an offer. I took the job, even though I was overqualified, because I liked my boss's spirit. I still was able to give back to the community, and my lifeline was not being cut off. <coughs> but what ended up happening was that I limited, I allowed myself to be limited. I, my, heart was on, my heart was on hold. My gifts were not being used, and I was in a box. I lost myself, and I lost a connection to my gifts. And from that, I became lost, insecure, silenced, and isolated. One of the things that I remember somebody was telling me is that in order for you to know where you need to go, you need to know where you've been. So I decided to get on a train and head back to Ottawa and spend time with my grandfather and my godparents. While I was there, my godfather gave me this book by Muhammad Yunus called Building Social Business. And as I was reading it, I, I found this quote, and this was the quote that I found. Every human being 
is born into this world fully equipped not only to take care of himself or herself, but to contribute to the well-being of the world as a whole. Some get the chance to explore their potential, but others never get the chance to unwrap the wonderful gifts that they were born with. They die with those gifts unexplored, and the world remains deprived of their contribution. This was my catalyst. This was my wake-up call. There was no way that I was going to live my life in a box, and there was no way that I was going to not fulfill my potential. So this led me on the quest of how, figuring it out how I could get my life, my heart out of a box. After watching a lot of episodes of Oprah, since this was her last season, and looking at other inspirational speakers, such as jo Joyce Myers, Lisa Nichols, and Richard St. John, I realized that I had to get myself out of a state of complaining to a state of gratefulness. And this is extremely hard when you're very miserable. So what did I do? I first created a vision board. And a vision board is something where you would put everything that you want to manifest into your life, your dreams, your hopes, everything onto this board. So I placed the places that I wanted to go. I placed uh, what I wanted my ideal job to look like, who I wanted to marry, Ryan Gosling, <laughs> just everything. I placed everything on that board. The second thing that I did was I created a CD of positive, uplifting songs. So I put some MJ and I placed uh, Define Gravity, Gravi Gravity, gosh, I can't speak, from the Wicked soundtrack, and Today I'm Gonna Change the World. And I listened to that continuously, over and over and over again, until it sunk in my head. And the last thing that I did was I woke up in the morning and I just said thanks for the day and thanks for all the blessings that I had. The next thing that I did was I acknowledged that I needed help. I was in a rut. So I, I sought out a professional development trainer who helped me put together a strategic plan for my life. So he helped me ask myself difficult questions such as, what is my mission? What is the vision for my life? Where do I see myself in three to five years? What do I like doing and why do I like doing it? The next thing that I did was I looked at a time in my life where I was the happiest. When I was, my, when I was most myself. And that was when I was a child. I was a free spirit as a child. I did not listen. I just did what I wanted to. I was very persistent. I would stand up to schoolyard bullies. And I was just a happy girl that loved to dance. A few years ago, I was at a bar in Waterloo, waiting for a drink, and a young man approached me and asked me if my name was Chelsea Prescott. And I nodded, looking at him, thinking he was about to blurt out a lame pickup line. But instead, he said this. When we were in kindergarten, I fell down the stairs. Everyone left me, but you stayed behind and waited until the teacher came and waited until I was OK. I have never forgotten that. Who knew what I did as a toddler would have such an impact that this gentleman would come up and approach me while he was intoxicated <laughs> in a nightclub? So that moves me to my other point, which is the ripples from your past can affect your future. Or better said, what you do today can impact your future. Giving back to the community and, and also volunteering has allowed me to unwrap the wonderful gifts that I've been born with. One of the things that I did to get more media experience was volunteer my time on a local internet television show, that channel. And I was a co-host. I just wanted to see what it was like to be in front of a camera. And I realized I really do not like being a personality. Even though I'm in front of you guys today, I would rather be the puppet master than the puppet. And the next thing that I did was I uncovered my life's mission. I looked at all the reoccurring themes in my life. And all the things that I've done thus far has helped people to get a voice, whether that be youth, women, or the community. It's creating, I have created forums that allowed them to get their voices heard. 
and that's simply what I've done all my life. So why am I telling you this story? Imagine a world where we get to live from our hearts. Imagine parents, teachers, and mentors fostering the gifts that children are born with. Imagine employers fostering the gifts of employees. Imagine making money while doing things that you love to do. To paraphrase Muhammad Yunus, from the moment that you were born, you have been a gift to this world with unique talents and skills to make a difference. You are the catalyst. You can make a difference. All you need to do is live from the heart. My wish for each and every one of you is that you uncover your life's mission. You unwrap those wonderful gifts that you were born with and you make a difference. And always remember that you are a gift, you have a voice, and it deserves to be heard. So if you feel lost and insecure and isolated, just ask yourself one question. How do I get myself out of a box? Thank you.